Welcome to Interface. Our today's session will be enlightened by the presence of Professor P. J. Chandran, an expert in the field of psychology. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Delinquency is not a popular term. So, sir, please can you tell us what delinquency actually means? Yes, uh, uh, the word uh, delinquency derived from delinquran, okay. a Latin word. And uh, delinquency means it is deviation from the norms. Any norm any society has, if someone is deviating from that little bit, this side or that side, it is a deviant act. So, th those people will be called delinquents. And uh, the act, delinquent act very clearly says, uh, in India, it is 18. In some states, in United States, it is 16. And rare cases, sometimes even the people who are 18 and below, they will be treated with a criminal law. Delinquents are governed by Children's Act in India. And uh, I must say, uh, the first Children's Act was passed in 1926 then Madras Presidency that includes uh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra, Karnataka. Later, Government of India in early 60s, they adapted National Children's Act. Then they have revised that, repealed that many times now. So, this act covers people below 16, 18 years. In some states, in United States, it is below 16. Uh, over that, if they commit some kind of crime or deviant act, they will be tried under criminal procedure law. That is the difference. Because uh, up to 18, it is considered to be a developmental age. And before that, if they commit, uh, they are still considered as youngsters. That is why the law will not be applied to them, applicable to them. So, sir, this is what is juvenile delinquency. Juvenile, yeah. Sir, how can we define the behavior of ju juvenile delinqu delinquents? Yeah, if they violate uh, any any act of the uh, Children's Act, and uh, in a way, if they violate any of the Criminal uh, Procedure Acts, uh, they they will be considered as uh, a juvenile delinquent. In that. We, I have to tell you one more thing. Uh, the Children's Act talks about children without parental control. If they are without parental control, if they go around the street, the juvenile police can take them into custody. They don't call them arrested. They will be take them into custody and they will be produced before the juvenile court. And in turn, they will be kept in uh, reception homes, not in jail. And uh, they will do kind of uh, reformation, testing, inquiry and all those things. And uh, this another act says, um, uncontrollable by the parents. If the parents feel that the child is uncontrollable by them, they can also uh, appeal to the court, juvenile court, saying my child is uncontrollable and the magistrate will look into that and uh, they will take necessary action. So, what do you think are the psychological reasons for the delinquent behavior? Oh, there are many, many, many. So, can we discuss the few main ones? Sure, sure. Um, uh, really, this is the collapse of the family system. If there is a family, they have a problem, like an alcoholic parent mm -hmm. or a alcoholic parent with severe poverty in the house, that may lead to delinquency. I can tell you a few examples uh, of delinquency. Father, very poor, alcoholic, and uh, no means to fend the family by the mother and the criminals 
adult criminals will just cash that kind of situation and they will take the boy, lure them in for example pocket picking, we call them popularly pickpocketing and they will be trained. The young people will be trained, that is uh, training centers all over India in every state to teach them how to pick pockets. So, this young very soft children will be in the hands of uh, criminals, will be trained to be a delinquent. This is mm -hmm. one, very clear. The other, uh, some of the family problems, if you say, um, I can tell you, the mm -hmm. extreme cases of murder, uh, one boy killed his one sister. This is, uh, she, he noticed some kind of uh, uh, illicit, immoral relationship with the neighbor. The family pride, he killed that uh, boy. This is rare, but that happens, extreme case I am telling. Otherwise, the delinquent boys, they may be accidental offender. They may go to a place, accidentally they may see something, they steal and go, because that lure them in the delinquents. Another one is occasional offender, whenever they need money, they look for the spot where they have the weak spot, they go and steal and come back. This is uh, what we call in psychology, topological psychology, that the topology helps him to commit the crime or juvenile delinquent act. Huh. And uh, yes, some, uh, some of them, once they learn once they learn easy money and they are in it forever. And uh, we always tell, oh, nowadays the children are bad and uh, uh, they are delinquents. But if you read, uh, interestingly, if you read the uh, kind of documents, what they have in Egypt, it's about 5000 years ago, so one father is telling, Oh, my young boy is killing me because he is so deviant. About 3000 years ago, 3000 BC, in Sumeria, one father tells, I am dying because of my adolescent boy has given me enough problem, so I am dying. Even now we say, oh, the youngsters are not obeying the parents and it is repeated generation to generation. Yes, there is a change there is a change, it is bound to have an impact and uh, even in stealing, earlier we used to say that uh, he was stealing something, something, now we say mobile phone they steal because once it is changes, the circumstances lead them to this kind of act where it is easy money for them. That is uh, one of the factors and also the other factor I must tell you very easily, the victim is also responsible for that. Mm. See, someone is uh, uh, snatching a bag from your hand and they study you and they think that you carry some good money, easily you are walking, alone you are walking and they snatch and run away. Like that, houses children, they break the houses, the locked houses, lone locked houses is an attraction for these people. So, we should see that when you lock the house and go away, in other countries they say that very clearly, okay, uh, they inform the neighbor, they, they take all the precautions, the local police and all, we do not do that. And a crowded bus will be an attraction for the delinquent to pick the pocket. A lonely house is an attraction for him to break the house and enter the house and steal. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, they use the situation. Um, regarding delinquency, I think if the victim or you and me, if we take little more care in handling the situation, 
probably we can avoid easily about 60 70 percent of the mm, cases we can really be saved uh, from that and uh, so there is a, a theory called victimology mm. how the victims are responsible for this kind of act in england they say it's in crime uh, most of the girls are raped after 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock in lonely places. That means they say why they should go to that place and they should avoid. So, this kind of situation is very good for the young boy uh, to commit an offense that is delinquent act very easily. And uh, some of them, some of them, uh, very few, very few of them uh, they may do it at the spur of the moment like certain children with epilepsy they may indulge in some kind of deviant activity deviant behavior they will have this kind of deviant activity uh, you as a psychologist we test the child not testing means just like that with a battery of test and we find out what are the problems he has, whether intellectual, personality problem or uh, attitude, aptitude, everything, motivation, everything we test. And if we see that is a deviant behavior, then we refer them to a psychiatrist or a neurologist for his treatment to get rid of that epilepsy, epileptic condition. Mm -hmm. And this is a little bit of uh, lot of discussion is going on about the drugs, how to give mm. for the person with mental retardation, for person with the deviant behavior, all these things are going on. In some, some states, United States, it is very, very clear, unless the psychologist certifies that I have exhausted all my non-invasive therapy, he refers to them and in his under his signature he gives drugs otherwise you can go to court and say my child is being with the uh, treated with the psychiatric drugs it is unwarranted like that so these are some of the things uh, we have to develop and we will be developing and we are following more or less the english system and they go to the psychiatrist first and the psychiatrist refers uh, to the psychologist that is how uh, it is. Mm. And uh, otherwise, uh, juvenile delinquents as such, um, there are many, many instances of delinquency. If there is a kind of wrong adjustment in the classroom, they will become delinquent. For example, a boy is an uh, underperformer in the class, he is not studying well and the causes how to solve that problem the teachers they don't go into that maybe he's intellectually little slow or he has some learning problems or he's a slow learner or he has some brain tumor he has epilepsy he could not concentrate on those things all those things we don't uh, see that at all and instead of that sometimes he may be a grown up boy in the classroom he may be a very tall boy and say get out from the class the punishment is unwarranted because he is not deserving that punishment because the problem not in his thing it is inherent intellectual this kind of problems he has that a psychologist can definitely identify and give the appropriate uh, uh, intervention for them. It is possible. I can tell a small uh, thing yesterday also I was mentioning this. I was working in the juvenile court system in uh, Tamil Nadu, Chennai for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. Every day in the court that uh, campus, I used to see a boy in school uniform. He will sit on the uh, tree and noon meals he will take, then evening he will go back home. 
Then one day uh, I persuaded him to come. I talked to the professor of psychology also. We found out that he is a kind of uh, not a good achiever in the marks and he was punished for that. So, uh, this boy wanted to be away from the classroom so that his self esteem is not affected among other boys and we talked to the parents, we talked to the, he should not be punished, we talked to the class teacher, school administration, everyone and we, he says, he is not a good achiever but we gave him a responsibility in the classroom. You collect all the composition notebooks, you, you take the attendance, carry that with the teacher, he gets little status and everyone is handing over that to him and you st he started attending the class as well. In the same time, we have told the teacher also, his achievement will be little lesser, but how to give him the right support for him to learn that. That kind of thing, uh, small, small problems we can eliminate. Instead of that, without studying that, if you put them in some juvenile home, mm. very dangerous, very dangerous because there will be some hardcore uh, juvenile delinquents, they will teach him all the bad things on this earth. So, this kind of uh, 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 role the psychologist can definitely play. <coughs> For example, with the psychological battery of test, a person might have committed murder, this is the serious offence. We will say, we will recommend there is scope for him to uh, reform. So, we will recommend that do not send him to the journal home. But someone would have committed a petty offence, small one, but we say send him to the journal home, delinquent home or approved school whatever it is, keep him there and this is the course of uh, kind of intervention should be given to him there. It is all based on your clear cut psychological psychometric information and this is uh, we can do it wonderfully well if uh, the, the government should take some more interest and um, uh, maybe if they can believe the psychological report as they believe in other western countries it is a must it is a must the same thing we can do very easily if you take 100 juvenile delinquents with the little bit of psychological intervention easily 80 percent of the people we can put them back into the family put them back into the school and make them fairly adjustable citizens it is possible the remaining 20 percent we need maybe intensive psychological intervention Inten sometimes um, pharmacological intervention, a neurologist or a psychiatrist uh, should intervene. And uh, this kind of uh, uh, thing, the, the juvenile delinquency, uh, we can really achieve. And uh, the probation system also there in juvenile delinquency, uh, we, we say sometimes we give recommendation there is a chance for, for the boy to go out and he, he, if he is involved in good act for the next two, three years, he need not come back to the uh, home, uh, delinquent home. There, the probation officers should work well. See, this many visits you have to go and if you simply say, you know after say after six months if you go and they get signature from the parent I visited, visited, visited like that, the, the probation will not work. Mm. You have to work. If you are really interested in reforming the delinquent boy, you have to work with the boy, some problem children and you can succeed, very easily you can succeed. That is what um, uh, we think, the system is there but we, the government should put that into work and things will definitely work. And uh, uh, <coughs> for example, some children will be punished 
for the deviant behavior. And if you go to any school, they, they are not punished. Huh? They would have done much more serious offenses in the school, but they are not caught. Because mm. the family support is there, the school support is there, they, they escape. Whereas, children coming from a very poverty stricken family, they do not have this support and probably they are caught. And they are caught and one more thing is definitely the street gone corner groups we call. Every street you will have some kind of um, not educated, not going to school, poor boys they congregate they assemble and uh, these young children who are chased out from the house sometimes the parents say get out do not see me again the school authorities will say get out do not see me again and they are the easy prey for the street corner group they will drag them involve them in criminal activities and they become juvenile delinquent on stage and you can see many of the things sometimes you see in juvenile homes they break and they escape and uh, many people ask, oh, they are hardcore criminals. No, the delinquent home should be kind of uh, invitation for them. If they work with the children really well, give them the kind of comfort and a kind of intimacy and appreciate them and channelize them, probably they will not run away from the home. They came into contact with the criminals because it is a poor house, maybe the house have only um, you know, 6 by 6, 6 people should sleep, they will sleep outside and uh, the criminals uh, use that uh, as an advantageous thing. The same thing happens in the juvenile home also, it is really bad. If there is a house, um, you know, they say house breaking or they broke the reception home, ran away, 18, 20 of them, that means our program in the home is not welcoming to them and we are not really carrying them. That is the meaning. Otherwise, uh, we can definitely help these people and the breeding place either home or the school. If we correct these two things, I think juvenile delinquency, we can considerably reduce this. Thank you so much, sir. I'm sure the session was enlightening for all. Thank you.